I was nervous and excited as I stood in the wings minutes before I was to take the stage in a theater in Moscow in front of a 2,000 strong audience. The event was to celebrate 60 years of friendship between Russia and India. And after the hour-long performance, I received a standing ovation, which was extremely good for my ego, understandably. And after taking the final bow, I walked back to the green room, extremely elated with myself, until a Russian lady came running up to me and she said, your dance was very, very good, but what is your name? So what is my name? Who am I when I dance? Is my dance more significant than me? Does that make the art bigger than the artist? I started questioning my mortal relationship with the timeless heritage of Bharatanatyam. This body that dances Bharatanatyam will go one day, but dance will remain eternal. I merely represent Bharatanatyam. I am not Bharatanatyam. And it dawned on me that no matter how many accolades, awards and standing ovations I may receive, I will always be smaller than my dance. A small question that taught me one of the biggest lessons of my lifetime, that there is a small because there is a big. And everything in this universe, whether small or big, is always smaller than something much bigger in comparison. That the smallest of things can represent the biggest of things. The microcosmic small is a manifestation of the macrocosmic big. So when I say I feel small, I don't in any way lack in self-esteem or consider myself insignificant. In fact, it's an absolutely empowering thought, though bereft of any kind of ego and arrogance. Because when a small drop of water considers itself a part of the ocean. It develops a sense of identity with the largeness of the ocean and aspires to become one with the ocean. So when I consider myself as a tiny speck in the huge spectrum of my dance form, I am inspired to represent that spectrum in the best possible way I can. Because I am filled with, the strength, of, with strength and fortitude to achieve high levels of excellence. Because this can happen only when I engage in a meaningful dialogue with my dance form. When I see the big, that makes the small look smaller than the big. When I see the larger picture while still looking at the smaller picture. So when I consider myself small and my dance form big, immediately, my vision enlargens, my whole perspective broadens and I'm able to see doors and windows opening before me. And this helped me to look at my own limitations in comparison to the limitlessness of my dance form. And therefore friends, I would like to dance for you today a 15th century composition by the saint poet Purandaradasa. The lyrics are in Kannada, where the poet says, he addresses the Supreme Consciousness and he says, You are the savior of the whole universe, but Mother Yashoda saw you as her small baby. In fact, this whole universe is a manifestation of your existence. But Mother Yashoda saw you as her little one. You are timeless. You are smaller than the atom and yet bigger than the biggest. You are limitless and you are immeasurable. But yet Mother Yashoda saw you as her little baby. 
I like this composition because it gives us a fantastic perspective of the small and the big. And the way the poet has depicted the human soul's relationship, connection with the omnipotent, omnipresent truth, I think it is quite like my relationship with my dance form. Because when we dance, we are the small that reflects the big. And friends, it's such a fantastic feeling to be the small but to feel the big within you. Sure. <laughs> 